Hey guys, welcome to Fox Boxing Theory. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Demetrius Andrade and his We Fight How We Train kind of stuff. So this video is from Fight Hype. It was put out, I think it was like two months ago or something. Um, it might have been more recent than that. It's, it's not a big deal, but it, I, it is for this fight. Um, and what I want you guys to be paying attention to, right? Number one, Everything this guy does is, you know, snappy and fast and explosive. These are all hard shots. Um, but what does he do in between punching? What is he doing, you know, this and that, you know, and, and at the highest level, right? He's not supposed to be learning, I'll say, quote unquote, fundamentals here, right? He should know fundamentals. They should be working on craft. They should be working on, you know, how the patterns really work inside the ring, okay? And we're going to be talking about that when we talk about that, um, Talk about some of that stuff when I mean, we watch some of the film. Um, and uh, obviously, you guys, for all the best and greatest patterns and ways and drills and all the things to learn to do, whether you're on the mitts or you're on the bag or you're a shadow boxing or what, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Okay, It's going to teach you all the best ways to do all the things that you want to do to learn to become the fighter that you want to be. So check it out. Um, Ooh, so he's throwing some punches here. Boom, hard punch. Boom, hard punch. Boom, hard punch. Boom. Oh, and there's the first piece of defense in this video. Right? And now, I want to pause it right here. Because he's going to go boom. And he's going to roll under here. And look at him. Stay here right here. We just got to take a look at something real quick. Because we already have a clip for it. All right? So here we go. Oh, not this one. That one's old. Here we go. Here he is, circling away. Now, this is in the third round of his fight in Williams, right? Now, notice, not really like defense, not controlling space. His hands aren't up. He doesn't look like a boxer, right? Now, we're going to talk about him because he is a premium athlete. Boom, pull, hit the shot, right? Rolls under, beautiful. What does he do now? He walks into a shot, right? He doesn't have defense. And look at him get wobbled here. Okay, let's go ahead and watch that again. Look at him get wobbled. A really good shot from this guy. Um, boom. And again, he doesn't really have any kind of post-punch defense, all right? This defensive responsibility, right? He doesn't defend his position after throwing a shot. And unfortunately for him, this is something that – a position that he winds up being in quite often, all right? But – and, like, he's not going to do too many, like, ooh, boom, boom, right? Well, we got a clip for that. So. As we check this guy out, and I want you guys to be thinking about as we go through this clip kind of slowly, right? Demetrius Andrade, well, let's do some backstory. Okay, let's talk about how the fight always starts, all right? Here's the first first part of this fight here, right? And is this – I want you to think about defense. I want you to be thinking about is he controlling space? Is he fainting? Is he probing? Does he just get on the line and explode and do something very dangerous? Boom, boom, walks this guy into some punches and moves off the line. Who in their right mind seven seconds into a fight throws a one, two, three hard at the line like that? Right? That's super dangerous, right? Well, not if you're always the hardest puncher. You're always the fastest guy. Here he is bouncing around and moving. Slip. Here's a, you know, slip and jump off the line, right? But is this defense? Is this the kind of defense that you're going to keep up all fight? Okay? A punch gets thrown at him. He closes his eyes. I want to give him credit for maybe blocking that, but we're going to watch it one more time just to make sure. As he gets onto the line here, faints him. Mm, does not look like he's actually blocking that. It looks like it's getting him here. Um, but he's not defending any punches. Here he is doing a very dangerous move, pivoting on the front foot, eating a left hook to the body on the, on the liver side. Right? And now watch him move, start trying to circle, but he has no head movement. Right? So he has to constantly keep his feet moving or throw these hard punches. Controlling a little bit of space there. Controlling a little bit of space there. Okay? Again, not really defense. Not really blocking punches. Not really catching. Relying on his athleticism. Right? It's very, very dangerous. Pushing his opponent to one side of the line or the other. He's kind of hoping that he's going to be fast and strong enough to kind of just hurt the guy. Right? Now, after he gets a little bit tired... He resorts to look at how he gets controlled and then just jabbed right away. He's not, he doesn't really defend that punch right there. He doesn't block, defend the, um, his position. 
very exaggerated head movement, crossing the line, then crossing back, and then ducking, and his hands are down, and okay, he didn't get hit there, but did he hurt the guy? Did he get any value himself? <laughs> Exploding out of a stepping jab here, getting countered because he doesn't keep his hands in a position to guard the line, controlling space with the little stepping jab again, very explosive, right? Everything he does is very explosive, getting hit here, getting hit here, and again, his actual defense for punches is very, very, very bad, okay? And again, we're going to take a look at some more of the training and talk about a little bit more of that. But he doesn't really set his punches up super well. He doesn't really put himself in. He doesn't play any of the games to control. He doesn't really change positions. So he usually has very, very, very few really good setups for shots, this being one of them. A clean one, too. He shows the guy the jab. The guy's expecting maybe just one little probing jab like he had been doing. And then it would allow him to come forward, hits him with the right hand, and drops him. But as we saw in the clip of the first clip, uh, he likes to flood the line with just any kind of random haymaker, any kind of random, you know, and I don't want to say random, but there's not a lot of rhyme or reason, right? Now, if we talk a little bit about um, his routine here, right? Again, where's the defensive stuff? It's all snapping. It's all punching. A little bit of this, right? But this is a very, very, very bad move, okay? His, he tries to hurt him here, and now he's on the front foot, and he's trying to pivot on the front foot. Go watch Zab Judah versus Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto has a great left hook, and he beat Zab Judah from pillar to post because he did this move, okay? Don't do this. Don't pivot on the front foot with nothing. Getting to the front foot is always as dangerous as getting to the front foot and getting on the line with your opponent. That's what you're doing. There's no space to just pivot. It's time to fight. So anyway, um, not real defense right here. Again, a little bit of the reason why he turns and gets caught by that guy. Punches, right? Now, Demetrius Andrade is a premium athlete. Very, very, very strong guy. Very talented, hardworking, in shape, right? But he doesn't really have any structure to his training, right? He's just coming forward, stepping jab, little stepping hook. There's finally a little defense there. Not a lot of blocking, not a lot of catching. And even his circling when he's moving around, right? It's very pedestrian, right? Just like in his fight, his opponent gets a little bit close to him, and he doesn't get to fight like this. He spends a lot of time running and moving and ducking and slipping his head and using a lot of energy, right? Because he can't really interact with his opponent's punches. Now, we're going to take a look at his heavy bag work. Okay, Getting on the line. So you guys remember this from his fight? Where he does a couple of sequences. And now he's like, okay, I'm going to run. right? And that's when he got punched in the face with the rear hand. Just trying to pendulum off. There's no breaks in the fight. It's three minutes of being on the line with your opponent. Every time you, you every time you transition your weight, you need to be fighting your opponent in the round of a of your shadow boxing or of your heavy bag work or your double limb bag work. Right? Now, what does he do when he gets on the line with his opponents? He blasts them, right? He just throws haymakers. And that's exactly what he does in his routine here. He just gets on the line a couple times, throws a bunch of power shots, and then tries to get off the line, but not really. Right? A little step around. Did he block a punch? Or is he just simulating his guard being up? Right? Did he intentionally look to block and and protect his position? No. He didn't look to defend his position or protect his position at all. A little explosion explosiveness. Keeping the left hand up, right? But that's not, again, blocking a punch. Right. And this is one of the reasons uh, and this is really interesting because he's fighting a guy like normally a guy like this, like uh, Demetrius Andrade. I would say that this guy would be, again, not real defense. He didn't block. Um, this would be like this this weight class's version of Hank Lundy. Right. Hank Lundy's pretty fast. He's pretty explosive. Right. And there's like a level of guy where even if they might be like more technical than him. He is just going to blast them out of the water, right? He's like, you ain't a real fighter, and just let them hands go, blah, blah, right? But he doesn't have great craft. 
He doesn't know how to block punches or catch punches or slip punches efficiently so that he can re-interact with your opponent and make them pay for their miss. And at a high level, you have to be able to interact and anticipate where your opponent's punches are coming. If you can't anticipate that, you're not going to be able to stop them from landing on you. And I think that, I think that, you know, Marcos Maidana is another guy who was, you know, very punchy, right? A lot of, a lot of, you know, and I think he turned out to be a pretty decent fighter. Got some good, got a little bit of craft toward the end. Um, but uh, at the lower weight classes, you know, like in Hank Lundy's case, these guys usually get weeded out eventually by good boxers. Someone who can block a punch, someone who can interact and wear them out. And I think that uh, Demetrius Andrade here has, you know, if he had enough craft, right, he'd be able to land a knockout punch almost any time he wanted to. You know, but his... His understanding of how to get onto the line, how to control space, how to control the line, how to block and catch punches, it makes him have to fight very, 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 very far outside and very explosively because he's always in danger, right? I mean, you're standing in front of a dude who's trying to knock you out. Like, yeah, you're always in danger, right? But I want to – everyone thinks they want to knock people out, right? But <laughs> most people, when they fight, they're just trying to survive. <laughs> but um, in Demetrius Andrade's case, you know, again, very, very, very poor defense here. Come on, guys. What is this? You guys see this here? Comes in. Is he blocking punches? What? What? Again, very explosive, very snappy and hard shots, right? No blocks, no catches. But um, those guys usually get weeded out very early in their career. They don't usually make it to the – always make it to the championship level. Um, but Demetrius Andrade is pretty big. You know, he's pretty big for the weight division. <clears throat> and if you can punch hard when you're bigger and, like, I'll say specifically punch hard – um, because you know everyone who's big kind of hits hard, right? Kind of, right? But it's much easier to separate yourself as a big man with power than a little man with power, because little men with power will still often get fooled by not learning how to get to get fast and technical, in spite of the fact that they can they can hit the they can hit really hard, right? They think, oh well, I can't learn to hit hard and be a good fighter, you know. But um, anyway, um, I think that, you know, Demetrius Andrade with a little bit of craft, all right, let's put the mitts on for a second. I think Demetrius Andrade with a little bit of craft instead of just, you know, this blank stuff, he could give anybody trouble, you know. He puts people down really early in fights. He's really explosive and he's really fast and he's really sneaky, you know. But the fact that he always approaches the line here in this pace, like when he fought um, Selecki or Selinski, right? When – after he hit Selinski a few times, if Selinski didn't want to just come in and just jump on his line, he would allow Andre to fight him like this, you know, just to be very basic on the line. He didn't make him run. He didn't, you know, because he'd been hit a few times. And there's a level of guy who just don't want to get hit by you, right? They know that if they take too many hits, they're going to get knocked out. You know, because again, he does put guys down early. He's fast. He does hit hard. Those are hard shots, right? He just doesn't know how to set everything up. He doesn't know how to take get his, his opponents out of position and still be in position at the same time. But um I think that I I think I bet against David Benavides before. Um, like, uh, I think I put a little bit of money on, uh, David Lemieux KO in case he got him with that left hook, you know, like a Hail Mary bet. And, um, I do still think that David Benavides is, uh, kryptonite is going to be a left hand. Um, a lot of times his, he's really tall. He stands up really straight. He doesn't block punches all that well himself. But he sees punches coming really well, usually, which means that when that left hand comes from Andrade, I think that he's going to see it coming, but it's still going to smack him. But because 
uh, Andrade is just not very efficient after he hurts a guy. He just jumps on him and throws all his punches, right? And I'm sure we'll see as soon as he gets on the line with something, right? One punch, getting on the line, boom, 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 a couple punches like there, no defense. But he'll he'll just unload bombs and tie her out. And I think at David Benavidez's level, he's been in enough gym wars, enough fights. He's sparred with enough guys that have tried to do that to him. Um, that Benavides is going to be able to uh, wear him down, right? He's going to weather the storm. Benavides is going to tire him out. And we saw this guy, very, 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 a very, very, very pedestrian guy here. And that got that has David Benavides written all over it, you know, even here. Boom, right? <clears throat> So I think that I think that uh, Demetrius Andrade is probably destined to be stopped in this fight. Um, but here's the thing: this is the this is the thing. David Benavides is going to have to hit him a lot to stop him. He's going to have to make it convincing, right? Because this guy's pretty strong and he's pretty fast himself, and that means he's going to have to get on the line. With uh, with Demetrius Andrade, and Andrade, like uh, like he does, I don't think this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, and it's still really dangerous to be on a puncher's line, right? Especially if he can lead with that left and maybe follow it up. But um, I do think overall. The fact that David Benavidez usually has a decently tight guard, it's okay. It's it's a discouraging guard to throw punches at, especially for somebody like uh, Andrade who wants to land one quick one, one sharp one. Um, but even worse for Andrade is the fact that David Benavidez is really explosive himself, and he's really fast and sharp. Um, his rear hand probe is excellent. It's a very, very, very good shot. His jab is very sharp as well. Even though his his defensive responsibility is poor after throwing his jab, it's not very good. Um, I mean, it can be. Sometimes it is. Um, but Demetrius Andrade is not really a counterpuncher, right? All these sequences here, his head stays in the same spot. Poor defense here, right? You can't do that in a fight. You guys remember him doing this in the fight? <laughs> But he had to throw his head around, right? Who, who, right? You don't really get to fight like that. Anyway, um, I do think at some point that David Benavides is going to get his hands on Andrade, and I don't think Andrade is going to look good taking punches. Um, thank you, Fight Hype. Follow them on Twitter and YouTube, guys. Don't forget to follow me and like my stuff and. Watch all that crap that I put out. More importantly, get the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Okay? It's going to change combat sports forever. It's the most brutally efficient system to learn all the skills you need to teach you how to, how to really get your, your value out of your time in the gym. Also, it's the first combat system to really teach power punching. And I'm not talking like you'll hit a little harder. This is every secret. Every secret that every trainer in the world has said can't be taught. Okay? And I cracked the code. Okay? Check out the reviews. Check out the power punching. Okay? <clears throat> um, I'm the first coach in history to be able to say that, that I completely cracked power punching. Um, and you can learn this skill too. It's not free. Okay? You're going to learn how to throw your best punch. You're going to learn the mechanics. You're going to work on it. And then after a couple of weeks, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is making sense. It's coming. Oh, yeah, this is – I'm still not hitting super hard. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of days, you're really going to get it. It might take a month, but you're going to start seeing that it's this incredible growth process, not this one gimmick thing. But it's going to put you on an incredible growth process, okay? I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to do to be able to bridge the gap between your power and speed and the power and speed of Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, okay? Anyway, um, 
check out the Talos Boston Combat System. Check it out. Learn to become the fighter you want to be. Okay. Um, yeah. Later.